Hi everybody, today we are going to show you the complete renovation of the inside of our new truck camper. And if you're like, wait a minute, truck camper, what on earth are Billy and Sierra doing in a truck camper? Go back a few videos and you'll see that we are getting a brand new boat, but it has to be built and that takes some time. So in the meantime, we are going to be redoing this whole truck camper and Billy's truck and making the ultimate adventure vehicle so we can still be on some crazy journeys while we're waiting for this new boat to be built. And this video is going to be a little different than most. It's a little longer because we wanted to show you the entire process all in one video instead of breaking it apart like we did over the lifetime of us owning the boat. We wanted to show this all at once, so we hope you find it really interesting and we hope you enjoy. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. What's step one? Take pictures. Take the cushions out. So step one is we're going to remove the mattress. We're gonna get a new mattress and we're also going to take the cushions out because they were kind of recently reupholstered, but red's not really our color. And I wanna try out making a box cushion myself. So this is going to be the perfect time for me to try it. So we're gonna remove these, remove this. And then our next step will be to clean and paint. We did two bug bombs today. We just set them off just in case there was anything in here. And I also sprayed the outside of the entire camper with like an outside home spray because it's kind of woodsy out here and ants could easily climb up the legs and everything. So I just gave it a completely spray down. Look at those nice windows. Ooh. I'm starting with cleaning this upper bed section. It was like super moldy, so I have some bleach. I'm spraying it with bleach, and then I'm gonna scrub it with a scrub brush, and then we'll paint it with some exterior like waterproof paint. And then I'm also tearing off all of the wallpaper. So the wallpaper he had done, the previous owner, it looked really good, but it was peeling in some of the parts, and instead of like trying to get wallpaper glue and gluing it back together we just figured take it all off paint it with a fresh coat of paint it'll be clean it'll look nice and so yeah most of the parts are coming off super easy but some of it the like under layer of the wallpaper is sticking so i'm gonna have to get like a heat gun and peel it off um but no surprise there <laughs> so yeah that's what's going on today in the truck camper. paper off and there's like this trim that's connecting the side of the wall to the ceiling and it's not on all the way it's kind of ripping you can see it's like peeling off so and on the other side it was worse so I ripped it off and you always find scary things when you dig deeper um, this looks a little rotted. Now there's a big gap in between the ceiling and the wall and somehow there's duct tape involved. Not sure what is going on, but you know what they say, it looks worse before it looks better. I hope at some point it's gonna look better. So I am at the point where I have gotten all the easy wallpaper to get off and the rest of it, the like I said, the underlayer is stuck. So I have added a new tool, a 
plastic razor blade thing and it's actually working really well so more scraping to go <laughs> I just finished day one. I think I'm pretty much done taking all the wallpaper off the walls. I used my little scraper. Took me literally all day long, but I'm pretty much there. I even got a lot of, there was some really weird like plastic soft trim that I took off. I ripped off a lot of trim around the countertop because the wallpaper was behind it. I would have really liked to have used like a box cutter knife to get that wallpaper off or an X-Acto knife, but I didn't have that until the end of the day, so I will be redoing all the trim around the countertop. <sighs> That's about it. It's hot, but there's a lot of windows in here and they all have nice nets, so I am not being bothered by any mosquitoes. Okay, time for dinner. I'm also one of those people who likes the space to be as clean as possible at the end of the day. So I vacuumed everything up, tried to organize everything a little bit. How's it looking here so far? Good. Good? Well, it's definitely in uh, disassembly mode, but it'll look good when it's done. Hello there! Today I am on a mission to remove all doors and drawers and also take off the hardware all without an electric drill. So here we go. The screwdriver I was using isn't the exact correct size. So I'm gonna run to Home Depot and when I'm there, I'm also gonna grab all the stuff I need to clean and scrub all the walls before we sand and paint. And I'm gonna grab some trim and then I'll be back. I'm back and I have to admit, I can find my way around West Marine, Marine consignment shops, no problem. Put me in Home Depot and I literally feel like I am lost in the jungle. It took me like two hours to go find a screwdriver with a square head a specific size along with the special cleaner in order to clean the gunk off the walls and spray paint that can go on metal anyways i'm back and going to continue taking off all of the cabinets I have taken everything off, all the hardware off, all the cabin doors off, I have vacuumed inside every opening and now I'm going to clean, clean, clean and more clean. I like clean. Billy finished the video he was working on and he came to assist me to pull down the top of the the, what is it? The oven fan? The stove oven, fan? Oven stove hood? We've never had one before, so we don't know what it's called. But he found something a little gnarly. Ooh. On top of that, I found some nasty lizard eggs. Just. It's kind of nasty to clean at first, but whenever we get a boat, or this time a camper, and we literally clean out and clean everything, it's so nice to know that we're living in a clean home. Shout out to mom and dad for letting us stay at the house and work on the camper in the side yard. Makes my commute to work pretty dang easy. Okay, so the goal of this cleaner is to just clean as much of anything that could possibly be on there off. And then after that's done, I can spackle and sand, and then I'll clean again, and then we can prime.
in case you were wondering, South Florida in July is a little toasty. I cleaned everything. Now I think I can um, do a little sanding and spackling wherever I have big or small holes and I'll fill that in, sand it again, and then I get to sand everything. Absolutely everything. And you know by now that that is my least favorite part of any project, but it's okay. One step closer to painting. It is almost like 4 o'clock. I've been sanding since 9.30, but I'm finally done sanding all the cabinetry, all the walls, all of everything. On another note, the sink in our bathroom is the most ugly color I've ever seen in my entire life. So in order to make the bathroom pretty, we are going to paint the sink. And I've been doing a lot of research online on what kind of paint I can use to paint a plastic sink, and there's not much information. There's I went to Home Depot, they recommended like an appliance paint, except the whole bottle said metal, 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 and I'm painting plastic. There's a tub and tile paint, but that's all about painting porcelain, which I am not. So I'm going to try just regular old Rust-Oleum white waterproof spray paint that says for plastic. So let's see how that goes. You need a more detailed idea on what the color looks like. There's that color. This is white. That is, what do you call it, peach? I don't know. So I'm gonna clean it, and then I'm gonna dry it, and then I'm gonna spray paint it, and then I gotta figure out how to spray paint the faucet. So I already sanded it with a sanding sponge, which the directions told me to do, and now I'm gonna wash it off with some soapy water get all the dust off. And I forgot plastic to cover everything, so I'll be right back. I think you all know I'm not a huge fan of using plastic for stupid reasons like covering paint, so I just went in the garage and I found some old like Publix paper bags that somebody used at the store. So we gave them new life and they are protecting the counters from the spray paint. And I know I already told you I'm going to be doing the counters in contact paper, so why the heck should I go through the trouble of taping everything off? Um, it's because spray paint, like when you spray, you can get like little drops everywhere, like from the splatter and I'm not in the mood to sand anything else, so hence my protection. Whew, okay, coat number one, down. We're stolen. Backup has arrived. What are you doing? Cutting your trim out exactly how you want it. <laughs> I got this chop saw for 40 bucks at the garage that one we got back. You sound like your father. <laughs> yeah, except I'm actually using it. <laughs> Ooh, burn, Mr. Sweezy. One other thing we can do to spice up our space a little bit is paint, spray paint, this old fashioned hardware. So you can really see that's kind of like old school when it's gold, but I think when we paint it all black, it'll kind of hide it and everything will just blend in. And then this was like a poop brown color and we'll just paint it black to match everything else. What kind of paint are you using? Spray paint, Rust-Oleum, primer, and paint all in one. This stuff's all a lot cheaper than boat stuff, huh? Yeah, but West Marine's a lot easier to maneuver yeah. around in. Versus? Home Depot. Ready for the transformation? 
Okay, 20 minutes, then we'll do it again. I have my paint all ready for my cabinets. They're clean and ready for primer coat number one. So far the hardest part of this whole project is literally not dripping sweat on the cabinets because I'm doing it in the garage, it's the middle of summer in Florida and you're supposed to keep all this stuff clean so as I'm like painting and dripping it's just not a good combination and if you watch these home renovation shows on TV where the people are all like nice up do and makeup and hair and everything and they all look perfect yeah not possible not possible at all okay i'm back in the truck camper i have my paint and i'm ready to prime in here i think i'm gonna start up there get the walls and that bare wood done and then kind of move my way down here so let's see how it goes let's see if i can stop sweating everywhere Hello everybody and welcome to the very very white interior of our truck camper. So I didn't want to bore you but I did two coats on everything of primer and it's the Styx primer I showed you before. And now I'm on to my first coat of our official paint for the walls, not the cabinetry, the walls. And I have been going to Benjamin Moore because it's literally right next to the gym and I don't have to waste a trip, I just walk right over there. And we got Ultra Spec 500 for the walls. And we also added complete mildew side. Because we're not only gonna do this in the walls in the main part of the camper, but I'm also gonna do this for the walls in the bathroom. And it's a wet bath, so the walls could get wet and obviously mildew could grow, but hopefully it won't with mildew side. Let's get going. I officially have two coats of the white wall color paint on all of the walls and the front side of the cabinets. I just have to do two more coats on the back side. But now it is time to add some color. So Billy and I are terrible with color decisions. So I literally went to Benjamin Moore and picked out like 50 different color samples. And I brought them back and I knew I wanted like a brightish, lightish blue because apparently light colors make small spaces look bigger. So my mother says and Pinterest. So out of all of these choices, we decided to go with 842. So we will see it's a like a bluish green, but very, very light and everything else will be white. And then we'll do our floor soon after that. But here we go, time to paint the cabinets. I can't do the inside of the camper right now because I have to tape off part of the white and the white is still wet. So I'll do the cabinets first. This was looking like 
way lighter than I was expecting. Well, even after two coats it is, you can tell there's a hint of blue green in there, but it still looks very, very light. And I wanted to pop a little bit more. So I went back to the paint store after the gym and had them double the amount of color they put in yesterday. So the same number I got, 842, they just did it at 200%. So let's see how it goes this time. So if you are interested in doing the same color, all you have to do is go to a Benjamin Moore, say you want 842 at 200%, cause that's what we did. Everything's starting to look really, really nice. I'm excited to finally get everything done and back on and have the camper actually look like a camper so we can see how all of this turned out. It is almost nine o'clock at night and I have just done my second of the green coat and I'm officially taking off the tape. Unfortunately, obviously, I'm not a professional and some of the tape wasn't glued all the way and you got some green on the white and, you know, whatever. It's as good as I could have done and I'm pretty proud, I think. Okay, Billy hasn't seen it yet with all the drawers in. We're still missing the ones up here, but let's see how he likes it. Yeah, come in. Oh man, look at that. Looks so good. Alright. Beautiful. all secure and we have the majority of all the cabinets in however I think I accidentally mixed up these two and the bathroom one somehow because now the little mounting plates aren't matching up so we have to do a little pilot hole and then put the screw new screw holes in but we left our drill on the boat so I'm just waiting for my dad to get back and yeah, so that's the last cabinet and the one up top. And But right now we're gonna work on the countertop. So I just got this on Amazon. It was like $27.99 and I think it's got 100 inches. We will see how much we end up with, but I was doing some research on YouTube and apparently if you like start to put it down and spray it with Windex, you can kind of move it around so it's not super, super stuck and get it where you want to go. So got my Windex and we're gonna try that and see how it works. Just to let you know, a lot of these bloggers that I've been watching, they make it look super, super easy and contact paper is not easy. And it definitely is just a surface pretty. You can, close up, you can tell it's not real marble or whatever. And I tried really hard. I had to cut by the sink because I couldn't get it all the way perfect. And from far away, it looks okay. But as soon as you get up close, you can tell it's not perfect, but it's okay. It looks pretty from, from afar. Okay, now I'm gonna do the contact paper on the kitchen countertop. I couldn't find any online, and I don't think they sell it, that is 
wide enough to cover the whole counter and go across, so you have to do it in sections. So there's gonna be a seam, so let's see how this looks. I did the Windex trick on the last one. I have no idea if it actually helps, so I guess we'll try it again. the hardest part because like even as accurate as you could possibly be with an exacto knife like I still go off course and then you see the countertop and then that means we're gonna have to go over with cock or little pieces of sticker and I don't think that looks very good so hopefully I can make it work. We're putting the vinyl floor in our truck camper. I just started, it seems pretty simple. I've never done this before, but yeah, it seems pretty simple. We got the vinyl floor at Home Depot. The other day, my mom helped us pick out the colors because again, we're not color people. Besides our floor, we also have this super handy dandy vinyl floor installation kit. We'll make sure to link that below. And what else do we need? We need a tape measure, a knife, and we're supposed to have a carpenter square thing, but we got this instead. What are you doing over here? I'm trying to make new cushions. Is this is this hole supposed to be here? Yes. <laughs> Good job. How'd you learn how to do that? YouTube. <laughs> Sail rights videos make everything super easy, except I'm like using a thing called basting tape instead of pins makes it super easy, but my needle like doesn't like the glue and it's like getting stuck and I'm just using like a basic like home sewing machine but I think it's working pretty well one it's down going through the material and everything it's supposed to be it's called a 30 minute cushion that took me like three hours <laughs> you think you'll get up to 30 minutes no <laughs> I don't is it all through sale right like how you're learning how to make it yeah I got my fabric on Fabric Guru. We've got a bunch of samples and then we picked one. We got a bunch of tools from Sale Right. Just watching the videos. It was like a bright wet red. They're really well made, but red's not our color. <laughs> Okay, my cushions are in. Everything fits really well. It looks really good. And then we have one more and the table goes down and then this sits right on top of it and that makes a whole nother bed. Whew, I'm excited that's over. I'm definitely not super into sewing, but it was a good project. It was good for me to learn. Sailrite was awesome with their videos but sewing's done. <laughs> the only thing we're waiting for is our tile for back here. Somebody's here. Let's see who it is. Ah, we got our mattress. Thank you, Amazon Prime. We have a 
mattress. So I just bought it on Amazon. It's supposed to be six inches. I think it takes 48 hours to completely pop up, but feels pretty soft. Looks pretty nice. What's the next project you're probably asking? Sticker tile. So I got these on Amazon. Um, I think they're like 20 dollars for a box and four sheets come in a box and we needed five boxes so it actually ended up being quite more expensive than I was planning on but I think it looks really really good so far so my only issue is that our counter is kind of slanted I'm sure everything in our V is a little slanted and I'm just worried that they're gonna look like the tiles are slanted but so far it looks okay my hardest part is going to be around the outlet and around the window, but we'll see how that goes. Wish me luck. I brought him back up. Say hi, Dad. Hi there. <laughs> That is two packs down. We actually really only used one pack. One kind of went to waste, but we have three left. And I think we'll have plenty. Maybe we can even do like a mini stripe in the bathroom, which I think would be awesome. So I think it looks pretty good. Can you see it? So this is what it looks like when you get it in the package. Um, there's four little sheets in each they also said that I'm at Home Depot and on Home Depot there was a calculator to figure out how many things you need so I did that on Home Depot. Home Depot was actually sold out so I bought them straight on Amazon and I'll make sure to put the link in the description. So the latest upgrade in the camper is a sink. So our kitchen galley I don't know what you call it in the camper sink it's like a little bathroom sink and it would have been fine except we cook a lot which includes a lot of dishes and with this if you have like a big pot in there it would have just gotten water any everywhere so I went to Home Depot and tried to find a sink that matched the exact thing we had already so we could just use the whole same system not have to drill any new holes so what I found was this and I think it's exactly what I was looking for. It's a bathroom sink again because it's a small space, but it's what we were looking for and it was much cheaper than the marine sink we had to buy on Adrenaline not too long ago. So yeah, it'll definitely help us not get water everywhere and make this space look a little nicer. Let's see if this is gonna work. shinier than the sink but that's okay um, it's definitely taller definitely will be much better sweet what are you doing making a barn door a barn door in a camper your idea <laughs> what's it for for our bathroom so it's gonna be a barn sliding door definitely not my neatest work at all but it'll be painted yeah, we're gonna paint it, we're gonna seal it. So, yeah, just kind of throwing it together, trim the ends off here. Little sheets of like quarter inch plywood and just pine, like trim. pine trim, yeah. Super easy. So the real way to make a barn door is supposed to use some other kind of wood and you like piece them together, but we just went the easy way that I found on Pinterest where it's a piece of plywood and then you only have your pieces of trim on one side. So way easier than it could have been. A little bit cheaper too, I think. How's it going so far? Everything has gone really well, except I think I might have mounted this slightly too high. Does that mean there's two screw holes in my freshly painted wall? Nope, because the back of this thing will block the two screw holes. Even when you open the door all the way? Yep. I don't think I should do this part yet either, but we also got this fancy new table 
that slides around, moves out of the way. But it's called Lagoon. And they're also made for boats. And look at this nice trim work. Don't put that camera too close to it. And these floors. Okay, we officially have a sliding barn door in our slided truck camper. Looks really cool. It slides really well. We're also gonna have to secure it really, really well with some like nice sturdy latch so that it doesn't slide open and close while we're on the road. You mean like this? And somebody came to visit. You like it in the truck camper? <laughs> and if you are late to the show or you missed a couple videos and you're like, why the heck are Billy and Sierra in a camper? Bring me back to the boat life. Well, there will be a new boat coming soon. We are just hanging out in this whole truck life until our brand new boat is finished. If we didn't tell you yet, we're gonna be towing. A